um, cases where we find sustainability issues, challenges, solutions. Yeah. Um, what are you, your questions when, when you hear this? Uh, the, some question must be, must arise. Peter. Okay. I like very much the first uh, presentation, but in my opinion, you have to put weights in the formula, then it will work better. Thanks. You have to put weights. Yeah. You have to put uh, for different people different weights. You, you collect uh, enough data to make those weights, not to be linear f uh, formula, but also to have weights in the front of the different uh, elements. In the okay. <laughs> exactly. This is absolutely correct. And I, as I just said, uh, and it's explicitly indicated in the presentation, we use the results of the stakeholders' analysis where we put priority to different stakeholders. We use this priority, I can't pronounce this word, to, to put weights on the sample selection. So you, you use stakeholders according to these weights. This is exactly what we do. No, that formula is about time. That formula, the CT and the RTs, refer only to time. But these are um, summations of the benefits of different stakeholders, which are weighted according to the results of the stakeholders' analysis. So in the stakeholders' analysis, you decide who is important and who is not, based on the results of the stakeholders' questionnaire. And then when you accumulate cost and benefits, these weights are there, exactly as you say it. OK, thank you. Yeah, Kevin. Really a question for, for any of the panelists, uh, I think. Contrasting what we heard at the beginning uh, about this way of analyzing what people may be willing, different stakers may, may be willing to pay, I suspect if any of you had tried to do that analysis before setting up your services, um, you would have found it all too frightening and you wouldn't even have begun. And yet, all of you have to some extent or another created something which does have an element of sustainability and in which in a sense, the value to the different stakeholders and what they're beginning to pay for it emerges because you took a risk, basically. And this is not unlike, in a sense, of the venture capital model of somebody needs to take a big risk without much evidence and, and prove that there is something of value there. I wonder if anyone wants to reflect on Anyone? Um, I, I think that um, with most VCs, they at least have an idea of the return they're going to get before they take the risk. Um, certainly uh, for Europeana, um, we are going in wanting to build a sustainable model um, that also delivers efficiencies um, as well. So we, we're hoping to find out what those are as we go through the project. And one of the things that we're finding is that the industry, our, our main uh, pr stakeholders, so the cultural heritage organisations, don't have a clear understanding of what participating in digital uh, services actually costs them. So we're, we're hoping that um, through this project they become better off um, as well. So it's a, it's a continuous exploratory um, process. We're also working with Europeana, but also with you, I, within the project Europeana Cloud at um, doing a more, a more uh, intangible assessment of the value um, using um, a model called the um, Balanced Value Model by a guy called Simon Tanner from King's College. So we're looking at trying to assess the impact of uh, certain activities that we're getting involved in, not from a, a financial point of view, but from a, a more intangible point of view. So uh, I think that for us, there's a lot of, uh, a lot, a lot of uh, research that we need to do before we can actually um, understand what those benefits are. So. So yeah, I'll comment on the, uh, the formula in your comment. So if we went into this analysis of stakeholders, we would have said, 
well, the, these stakeholders, which have the biggest investment of the software and really rely on it, are going to be willing to pay more. I mean, that's obvious, right? Well, that's not the truth. <laughs> the reality is, is that we have really big institutions like Harvard that use our software, and they pay less than really small institutions in foreign countries. And so it was really hard to, you know, kind of put everybody in a box. I'm not saying your formula isn't wrong, but, but I'm just saying what my experience was. Um, and so that's why we left it really open to say, okay, you tell us what you're willing to pay. Here's a range, which we think you should pay, but then you tell us what you're willing to pay. And then you have to balance that with what they put in to the common good because lots of institutions don't pay anything, but they contribute significantly to the common good, the common good meaning in, uh, giving code that benefits everyone versus just their institution. And how do you put a price tag on that? So it was, it was really trial by error <laughs> that we tried to figure out how to make it work. Just, just very quickly, uh, I want to add that Archive Sustainable Model is also based on a um, stakeholder analysis, but was qualitative through interviews and testing scenarios. It was all qualitative. But also, one thing that I really forgot to mention in the rush of making this a 10-minute presentation is our initiative is work in progress because the landscape is evolving so rapidly. For instance, now with the, even within the U.S., with the emerging new mandates coming from the government, we are going to look probably within a couple of years again all the stakeholders, especially publishers and societies, and their role. So I just want to emphasize that this, is an on, this should be seen as an ongoing process, assessing the risks and experimenting with different, different models, but we don't yet have the magic kind of solution. Um, I, I just wanted to say that uh, the way you rank the stakeholders is not up by the, there are criteria, different criteria, which uh, has with the legitimacy of the involvement, their willingness to get involved, is not just by the size of the ins institution. And uh, something that I wanted to point out is that, um, you know, this whole methodological process is the only way at least that I know that it exists and it's really state of the art with regards to the development of the, of the actual methods that uh, you use, that you can retrieve benefits and cost in their totality and you can support claims of sustainability of uh, uh, open access infrastructure. You can here and there find benefits and costs, but in a way to do it, consistently over time and to identify the total economic costs and benefits, you really need to start f from the start of the whole process. And this project just started, so it, it, it has a year, so I hope in a year I will be able to present. Yeah. Hi. Uh I have a specific question to our European presenter and then a more uh, general question. I was wondering when you were referring to the, the word cloud, whether you meant actually some commercial providers providing some capacities or whether you used the word cloud to kind of picture the collaboration of the different institutions. And my, my more general question is, how do you see uh, commercial providers fitting in your activities, and do you think it's, uh, it makes it either to finance and sustain the services, or to the contrary, uh, does it make it a bit more difficult? Okay, uh, I will try and answer that. I'm not a technical person, so uh, let me see what I can do. Um, the, uh, it's called European Cloud because the uh, funding um, source was about cloud-based. <laughs> projects. Um, the, what we're actually developing is an infrastructure that um, uh, sits in, in cloud-based, in, in a cloud storage solution, and it allows people to, um, to submit their content via uh, cloud computing services. Does this make sense? Who owns the cloud? Who, who owns the storage services? Um, well, firstly, Europeana will invest in certain levels of services along with partners, um, but that will be something that the community also contributes to. Um, 
coming back to Kevin's uh, uh, question about one way of taking the risk and going forward and the other way is going through the methodology and I think in open air uh, we are a bit different than archive or uh, DSpace or DOIJ more similar to Europeana is that we have uh, we are working across Europe with many different stakeholders we even ourselves don't know the stakeholders and their power and their invest uh, in their investment in open air so and since we had the capability through a proposal to have a sustainability we thought let's make it the proper way to really see what's going on there and this is does this this is the answer your question because we could take it the other way but we've done that through driver driver to open air and it doesn't go anywhere and second we hope that if we have this tool the results of this uh, sustainability study is that we have a, a tool to go to the Commission or the national governments because this will be uh, a leverage One last question before we go to the panel, next panel. Yeah. I have a very short question for Oya. Did you ever consider on your meetings, uh, wherever, uh, to organize peer review process around archive? Coming. Um, actually, if you haven't heard, the question is about uh, if Archive Group has ever considered adding a peer review layer to Archive. Uh, actually, I think uh, another sustainable principle for us is to uh, stick to the core values of Archive and not try to grow without having a really uh, stable funding source. So in, in many ways, we are still trying to create a stable financial model for what Archive does well, which is preference. So in that sense, we have not considered. But on the other hand, it doesn't exclude that Archive uh, is compliant with several uh, uh, data exchange standards to be able to enable overlay journals. And that I'm aware of at least three overlay journals that have their peer review layer and that they rely on. Uh, archive. For instance, actually from coming from France, EpiScience, it's a new initiative, but that is the goal too, to create uh, mathematics journals where there's a layer for uh, peer review and archive serves the role of repository. Good question. Great. Okay, we have to end this session here now. Thank you very much again for uh, your interesting talks. See you. Okay, um, now we have a panel discussion, which will be moderated by Irina. Yeah, and I, uh, while we are changing panelists, I suggest you maybe to stand up and yes. uh, st st stretch your, I don't know, legs, arms. Uh, I'd like to invite uh, Kevin Ashley, uh, Ruta Petrouskaita, and uh, Damien uh, Le Carpentier to join us, sir, so you can... Choose your seat, sir.